Replace Photoshop with GIMP or Microsoft Office with LibreOffice. We have all heard or in some cases said these words and they are good recommendations, but they are a bit overplayed. But what about a lot of other very popular proprietary apps like Obsidian, Notion, Microsoft Teams or Slack, Acrobat Editor, VS Code, Trello and more? Well, I do have some good open source alternatives that I want to recommend in this video. And if you have other alternatives, don't hesitate to share them down in the comment in the comment section below so everyone can benefit. And speaking of open source tools, how about our sponsor? This video is sponsored by Thunderbird. Most of you probably know about it, but for those who don't, it's an all-in-one suite that handles email, calendar, contacts, tasks, RSS feeds and chats. Thunderbird recently received a giant update with a full redesign of the app that makes it easier than ever to set up your accounts and to be productive. The interface is very customizable with multiple choices for interface density, view modes, panels and the ability to place any button you need in the top bar. After this update, Thunderbird is now my email and calendar client of choice. Also, it's fully open source, it's free of charge and it's available for any Linux distribution, Windows and Mac OS. So whether you used Thunderbird in the past or not, click the link in the description below and give the new release a try. You will not regret it. So one app that everyone talked about for a while is Obsidian. And it's great. It offers the ability to link nodes together bi-directionally. So links go both ways. It uses Markdown and plain text to store your notes. It has a plugin ecosystem and the visual knowledge graph that lets you explore topics and the relationships between your notes is awesome. But it's proprietary, so if you prefer your apps to be free software, then let's look at LogSec. This one is published under the GNU 8 GPL and it does everything Obsidian does. It takes notes as markdown files, it has more than 150 plugins and a bunch of themes, it has mobile apps, it's private and it does have the same linking features and knowledge graph. It even lets you create queries to generate tables with all the information you need based on the links and the data you entered in your notes. What this means is that like Obsidian, it can be used for simple note taking or for ultra evolved workflows, research projects and knowledge bases. Something that if you're like me, you always wanted to do but never took the time or never really actually had a use for. Now LogSec even offers their own syncing solution if you want that. Although since notes are stored as plain text files, you can also just sync them using whatever cloud storage solution you prefer. They also have a new whiteboard feature to let you place your thoughts on a canvas and organize things before writing a fully detailed note. It's available for Linux as an app image and for macOS, Windows, iOS and Android. And of course, LogSec isn't a complete drop-in replacement for Obsidian, as some of their features don't work in the same way and Obsidian still has more plugins, so some use cases probably won't be covered entirely. But I can confidently say that most Obsidian users should be able to move to LogSec without too much trouble. Well, apart from actually migrating your Obsidian Vault of Nodes to LogSec, which might take a little bit of time. Another really powerful app is Notion. In a way, it sort of fills the same role as Obsidian, but in a more visual way. You can create notes, to-do lists, tables, boards, wikis, and anything in between with a lot of templates. And while it's free of charge, it's proprietary and doesn't have an official Linux version. Now granted, it's a web app, so you can always use it in your web browser. But again, if you're like me, using an app in a web browser just doesn't cut it. It just doesn't feel right. The closest thing you can find in the open source world will be either AppFlowy or AnyType. AppFlowy is really close, but it's not as feature complete just yet. It's open source, it's available for Linux from Flathub. You can create your own structure with pages and subpages, and you have a few page types like calendars, boards, tables, or documents. You can also mix these types on the same page, like having a board with cards that you can also present in a table or on a calendar, but you won't get as many templates as what Notion offers. 
Your text notes can have a lot of formatting with headers, images, checkboxes, lists, quotes, code blocks and equations. Tables can use a large variety of column types like dates, selectors, URLs, checkboxes and more. And boards handle statuses, dates and all the properties you can add in a table as well. It also lets you use OpenAI if you want to write drafts that you can edit later. Yay, more AI stuff. So cool. But AppFlowy also doesn't have mobile apps yet, they're being worked on, and it doesn't quite let you build wikis, although you can link page with one another if you want. If you want a more full-featured app, there's any type instead. It's also open source, and it has a Linux client and mobile apps. But the interface is a bit more involved and less clear to start with than AppFlowy. They have a very solid roadmap for what's coming in 2024 as well, and it already supports everything that AppFlowy does and a bit more. Now, AppFlowy lets you work completely locally without an account and doesn't have native sync capabilities, while AnyType lets you work offline or sync online using encrypted peer-to-peer -peer syncing. Basically, if you use Notion for very simple, single-type pages, then AppFlowy is probably good enough and simple enough. If you use Notion in very involved ways, then any type is probably going to work better for you. Also, their website uses the old Apple font, which for some old nerd like me is actually pretty fun. Not that it has any bearing on the quality of the app itself anyways. Now, for this one, you might not have as much control over, because generally a company or a project will impose Slack or Microsoft Teams on you, and you can't really change that. But if you have all the power to make the decisions, then you might want to take a look at Mattermost. It's a fully open source Slack slash Microsoft Teams alternative that you can self-host easily using Docker or any other method you prefer. It lets you create channels and chat with side threads. It has file sharing, screen sharing, and audio calls. It can be integrated with a bunch of developer tools to automate things. You can format messages with markdown or code snippets, and all messages can be archived with full history search. If you don't want to self-host, they also have plans you can pay for as well with added professional support and a few more advanced enterprise features. The only thing it lacks really is video calls. You will have to plug something else in like Jitsi or Big Blue Button, but there are integrations available to make that transition completely seamless while you use Mattermost. Now, if all you need to organize yourself or your project is a board, you might use Trello. And this one is pretty easy to replace. You can just use Focal Board. You can either self-host it if you want to let multiple people access the same boards, or you can just use it as a personal app with a macOS, Windows, and Linux application. Focal Board has plenty of templates for projects, for content planning, for roadmaps, for meetings, and more. And it supports real-time collaboration with comments on cards, mentions, and permissions. It is fully open source, of course, and you can present things as boards, lists, calendars, or galleries. It lets you create an unlimited number of boards for free, you can have your own custom attributes in each board, it supports backup and archiving, and file sharing in cards as well. So you could theoretically use it as a replacement for Notion as well, if you use Notion with boards and tables mostly, but I personally always saw it more as a Trello replacement. Focal Boards does lack a few things compared to Trello, notably mobile apps, integrations with other services and apps, and it also has less templates. But if you don't mind creating your own boards from scratch and you don't care about integrations and mobile, Focal Board is probably the best thing out there. Apart from the fact that I'm probably pronouncing this name wrong all the time and it sounds like something else entirely, but I also don't know how to say it any other way. Now, if you need to create and edit PDF documents, you might use Acrobat Pro from Adobe. And if all you need is to create PDFs, then you do not need a dedicated app just for that. Make your document in whatever app you're comfortable with and export it as a PDF. But if you need to modify PDF documents, then you might be starved for high quality apps. You can always open them in GIMP, in Inkscape or LibreOffice Draw, but these tend to either open a single page or break the document's formatting. 
LibreOffice Draw does a great job if you have all the fonts used in the PDF that are also installed on your system. But editing text is generally handled in a line per line basis instead of recognizing things as paragraphs, which can be a pain to deal with. And of course, PDF is not a format that you're supposed to edit. So in most cases, your best bet is to actually edit the original version of the document if you created it, or to ask the person who sent it to you to send you an editable format. But in some cases, that's just not an option. Now, Visual Studio Code's code is licensed under the MIT license. So it is an open source slash free software project. But the binary you can get from Microsoft isn't open source and it includes some telemetry and some tracking. The alternative thus is easy. It's VS Codeium. It's built on the open source parts of VS Code, but it removes all the tracking, the telemetry and the proprietary components. It's compatible with VS Code's plugins and extensions, and it has the exact same interface and features, but in a nice open source format. It's available for Windows, for Mac OS, and for Linux as a Deb, an RPM, or on FlatHub. It does have a few restrictions compared to VS Code, notably for specific Microsoft extensions that cannot run outside of VS Code itself. It also uses another extension store that isn't the one Microsoft uses, since this one is proprietary. But you should be able to find most of what you would actually want to use in there. Unless you work with specific Microsoft technologies, you'll find the exact same interface and the exact same plugins, but in open source format. It's a no-brainer. And now for a few other recommendations for nice open source apps and services to replace your proprietary software with. To begin with, there's the good old Nextcloud. It's your fully open source replacement for stuff like Office 365 or Google Workspace. It handles file storage and sharing, collaboration, chat and video calls. It can integrate with open source Office suites like Collabora Online and OnlyOffice, and it has a ton of additional apps that you can add to it. It is what I use every day to run this channel and accomplish all the work related to actually publishing these videos. It's great, it receives updates really often, and it's super modular. I can't recommend it enough, which you might have noticed since I talk about it in almost every video. If you use Outlook for email, take a look at Thunderbird. The new interface is now wonderful, and it handles tasks, calendars, and emails really, really well. And if you need to plug into an Exchange server, there's a plugin for that as well, just like for virtually anything you would want to do in the app like sticky notes, adding links to Nextcloud files, templates, and more. Yes, they are this video sponsor, but they're also my email client of choice that I use every day. The new version is really, really good. If you have other cool alternatives to all these apps or to other proprietary apps that a lot of people use, don't hesitate to let us know down there in the comments so everyone can benefit. And in the meantime, I will let you know about our sponsor. If you're a Linux user and you're planning to upgrade your computer to something new, stop buying devices that ship with Windows pre-installed and crossing your fingers so that your favorite Linux distro just runs on your new thing. Buy something that supports Linux out of the box from Tuxedo, our sponsor. They sell laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box. All the hardware that they pack is specifically picked because it runs Linux really well. And they actually submit patches upstream to fix all the little problems and compatibility issues that you might encounter. They have a big range of devices that should cover every need and every price point, whether you're looking for a laptop, a NUC, a giant tower, something for gaming, something for productivity. You can select the components you want. You can also select the keyboard layout you want on your laptop, have your own logo or your company's logo engraved on the lid. You decide everything. All the laptops are also openable, repairable, and upgradable, including the RAM, the SSD, and the battery, and sometimes even the wireless card. So if you need a new computer, don't buy something that runs Windows. Buy something that runs Linux from the link in the description below from Tuxedo. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, or to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, I don't really see why, but you can always let me know down there and click that thumbs down button as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description of the video as well, like LibraPay, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, whatever, you know how this works. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you will see me in the next one. Bye!